So now we're gonna learn about type string. We've looked at bool, we've looked at numeric types like int and float, and now we're gonna look at string. String has some complexity to it, so I'm gonna introduce you to the simplicity of string and how you could use it easily. Remember, ease of programming. That's one of the goals of the Go programming language, efficient compilation. This is gonna be burned into your head by the end of this course. Efficient compilation, efficient execution, and ease. Ease. Say it with a sigh, ease of programming. <laughs> Thank goodness. It doesn't have to be awful. It doesn't have to be complex. And when you're ready to go deep, when you're ready to get into the complexity, when you need to get into the complexity, uh, Go is there for you and Go will allow you to do that. I'm just having a moment of panic where I was thinking maybe I didn't turn my mic on, but it's on. All right, so let's look at the ease of programming with strings first. And, uh, and we'll just go to the Golang Playground. And we've already seen this, so this is gonna be a little bit of a review. And then after I show you the review stuff, I'm gonna give you some resources and explore some of the complexity and give you some insight into the deeper inner workings of strings. All right, so the first stuff is just to know how do you create a string. So if I'm gonna have a variable, and I'm just gonna take that out of there, and I'll call mine s colon equals, and, uh, and a string can be created with double quotes, which you already know, and we'll print out the type too. And uh, it could be created with double quotes, string, or it could create, be created with back ticks. And if you create it with back ticks, that's a raw string literal, so it'll include you know, any return, spaces, whatever you want. You can't do that with the double, the double quotes. Only the raw string literal back ticks will do that. So you could create a string either of those two ways. That's cool. So the next thing I want to look at, and I'm just going to put the double quotes back, is uh, the Golang spec. So the Golang spec says under type, right, a string type represents the, uh, the set of string values. A string value is a possibly e uh, empty sequence of bytes. Strings are immutable. Once created, it is impossible to change the contents of a string. And the, the type is type string. That's the type that we use. So it's a sequence of bytes. And what that is under the covers is a slice of bytes. And so we could come here to the Golang Playground, and I'm going to take all of this uh, right here. And if it's a slice of bytes, right, a byte is a type. A byte is an alias for an int 8, and that's a type. So I could do slice of byte, and I could use conversion to convert the string from type string to a slice of byte. And so maybe I'll even do that as a variable. So I'll do bs colon equal and do that conversion right there. So this is going to be converted from type string to a slice of byte. And now I could pass all of that into this. And I'll do bs here, bs here. Many strings are bs. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't plan that. And we could he see here, it's a slice of bytes. Wow, that's pretty interesting. And we have hello playground. <coughs> and it tells us actually that the type is a slice of uint8, even though up here we called it a byte. A byte is an alias for uint8. That's kind of interesting. So uh, 72, if we go look at our ASCII coding scheme, and ASCII is the first part of UTF-8, and we look for 72, we see it's a capital H. And that is capital H. And then we have E, L, L, O, 101, 108, 108, 111. 101, E, 108, L, L, and then 111, O. And so we could see that this string, right, that we have used a coding scheme to represent letters of the alphabet. And those letters of the alphabet are being represented right here by these numbers. And those numbers are 72, 101, 108, 108. And those are being represented as, uh, as decimal numbers. In programming, we also represent things as hexadecimal numbers, hexadecimal numbers. And so we'll learn about the difference between the numeral systems in a later one. But sometimes you'll see that represented as hexadecimal numbers. And in fact, in UTF-8, and now we're diving a little bit deeper. So in UTF-8, and this is just kind of nice to know stuff, in UTF-8, a UTF-8 code point is one to four bytes, one to four bytes. And each code point corresponds with a character. So, you know, there'd be a code point to correspond with the character H. Now, it gets a little bit confusing 
when a character can be represented by different bytes or different code points. Two code points could come together to create a character in some languages, and that's where it gets a little bit uh, complex. But um, here, right, it, uh, basically a code point in UTF-8, a code point in UTF-8 is a character for all intents and purposes, and there's more complexity the farther you get into it. So um, code points are represented in hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is just another way of representing a number. It's base 16, this is base 10. We'll learn numeral systems at some future point in this course, right? But right here, you already saw that thing that a string is made up of a slice of bytes. So we could actually take that string and we could convert it to a slice of bytes. And then we could print out that slice of bytes and we could see, oh, 72, that corresponds to H. That's a coding scheme, right? And 72 here, just to kind of tie it back to what we learned about computers, 72 here is this sequence of, let me bring it up, light switches which are on or off, light switches which are on or off, on, off, off, on, off, off, off. Uh, pretty cool, 72H. Um, and then that, this is how you'd represent that in hexadecimal. So it's just another way to represent the same information. And that's how UTF-8 does it with its code points. And so some things which allow you to see the internals as more of the hexadecimal UTF-8 way is we could use these things right here from the FUMPT package with format printing, uninterpreted bytes of a string or slice, double quoted string safely escaped as uh, Go syntax, base 16, which is hexadecimal, lowercase two characters per byte. So you could see that one right there. And you could also come down here and you could do a percent pound U. And you could see the UTF-8 character for that. So let's take a look at those and see those in action. And to do that, there's a couple of ways we could do it. The first, and this is just kind of like a tour of things to come. The first is do a, a for loop. And so I'm gonna do that, and then i is less than length of s. And so this is just a tour, and uh, we're gonna see how, learn how to do all this as you go through the course. And, uh, and now I'm going to do fumpt, uh, print f, and uh, I'm gonna put in here a percent and I will use that pound U, and that's going to print out, let's see, S, and then I, and let's see what it prints out. And I'll put a little space between each one and just make sure I have the right syntax here. Boom, 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 uh, go doc, here we go. Percent pound U, that's what I'm looking for. And that's gonna give me my UTF-8 code point format it and run it. So here's the UTF-8 code point right there. And, uh, and it's printing out H, E, uh, and then the L, and then you know the, what the characters represent. So that's pretty neat. It's pretty cool. All right, um, let's also look at for, for index value colon equals range, because when you do this with a string, you get a slightly different result. And let's print each of those out. And first we'll just print out the index and the value and see what they look like. So here we have 101, 108, 108, 111, 144 in the index position of the string. So that corresponds to 101 is, uh, oh, for range s index print line. And we need a new line right here. So I'm just gonna print in a new line because we lost our zero. Our, uh, we lost our 72, so our new line right there, and our 72 ended up way over here off screen. So right there, there's our 72. So now uh, that will print out more clearly, the hello playground. There we go, so index position zero is 72, which is the H, one is uh, 101. And if we wanted to see those values as uh, hexadecimal, we could do a print F instead. So we could do print F and then uh, we could say at index position, and this will be percent D, right? And we'll pass in that I to that. We have uh, hex, and we could do percent pound X and pass in the V, and let's see what that looks like. And uh, we'll do a new line after each one. There we go. At index position zero, we have hex 48, 65, 6C, 6C, 
And if we come back here and we look uh, at that, we see that 6C corresponds to the L's. So if we come to the L, lowercase l, we see that hexadecimal, we have 6C. So whether you look at it as decimal 108 or hexadecimal 6C, or hey, here are these light switches in this on-off arrangement that represent L, and we'll see how to count from in, in binary to get 108, convert binary uh, base 2 to uh, decimal base 10 to hexadecimal base 16. I'll show that in the next video, actually. Right? That all corresponds as the same way to say, to say L. And so here we're showing it in hexadecimal, right, with the leading 0x, meaning hexadecimal. And, uh, and here we're showing the UTF-8 code point. So we're showing the code point, and here we're showing it in decimal, base 10, right? But all that corresponds to the coding scheme of here is H. And the coding scheme which is used now is UTF-8, and this is the UTF-8 way to represent it. And each code point is known as a rune. So that's why we call it a rune, and that's why rune is an alias for N32. Uh, you know, each rune is a code point in UTF-8. So that gives you some insight into strings. And something which you know, looks maybe like, oh, that's going to be totally easy, it's just strings on the outside, actually has a lot of depth and a lot of complexity. <laughs> and in some ways in Go, uh, the, easy, the, the hard things are easy and the easy things are hard because you have to understand the history, the terminology, the background, where computer science has come from, what's the history of coding schemes, what are the the engineering implementations and specifications, what do they say? <laughs> you know, and then doing a loop and things like that, okay, no problem, or declaring a variable, no problem, and ease of programming, no problem. But when you need to draw on the complexity and the depth and bring all of the powers uh, to, to work on whatever it is that you're trying to solve, you have access to all of that. And so it's a language which allows you to go as deep as you wanna go when you wanna solve a problem which is pretty cool. And it does it in a way where most of the time, if you don't need it, ease of programming, ease of programming. So some resources for going a little bit deeper. A great blog post by Rob Pike here, the Go blog, Strings, Bytes, Runes, and Characters in Go. And, uh, and um, yeah, that's the, that's the resource which I'll give to you. So, uh, so that's a great one to read. And then the main takeaways from this video, just for you getting into programming, if you're just getting into it, or if you already have some experience, is that we create strings with double quotes or with, with uh, you know, the back tick characters, and that's the raw string literal. And each, each, uh, each, everything, all the code you write in Go is encoded as UTF-8, but that doesn't mean that all of your strings are gonna be UTF-8 code points. You could have bytes in there which, which you know, uh, don't correspond to a code point. And so uh, we could take a string, because a string is a slice of bytes, and it's immutable, means you can't change that, change what's the value that's stored there. I can assign a new value. So if I wanted to, I could say that, you know, S is now equal to hello Hawaii. <laughs> right? So originally I stored the value hello playground. This is a value of type string, and I stored it in a variable which holds values of type string. I originally stored that value in the variable s, and now I'm assigning a new value of type string to the variable s, which holds values of type string, and I'm printing that out here. And so you can assign a new value, but you can't change a string, right? So once it's there, you can't change it. You can't go in and start changing, changing the bytes. Um, so uh, that, that's, that's good to know about strings. They're immutable and that they're also a, a sequence of bytes, a slice of bytes. And so you could go in and you could see that. You could do conversion and see that slice of bytes and actually see how this translates back to the, to the ASCII UTF-8 coding scheme and see those numbers, which is pretty neat. All right. Um, the one last thing that I think I'll say is that the Golang, Golang website, they have this character right here. And this would be a cool hands-on exercise, but with that character, you could uh, go through and try to inspect these Asian characters using some of the things that I just gave you. Maybe we'll save that for a hands-on er uh, exercise, because those are going to be more than one byte. Everything we've looked at so far is just one byte, but those are gonna contain more than one byte. And so uh, this blog post will help you solve that hands-on challenge, which I'll give you in the next exercises, and then I'll solve it for you too. But that'd be an interesting thing to look at. 
So that's a little bit, a lot of information about strings. And uh, don't worry too much about the complexity. If some of that stuff speaks to you and makes sense, great. If you want to investigate it more, you know where to do it. And also you know that Go's got the tools and power to you know, take you where you need to go when you need to go there. And at the, the, the front side, it's uh, really easy to work with. So we saw some things which we're going to learn more about as we go through the rest of this course. The loops, the sequences, so the slice of byte. Right, and, uh, and that's just a preview of what's coming and what you're going to learn. Mm -hmm.